In this episode, Elon Musk got beef with OpenAI. The figure robot added a one and Nvidia quantum leaped in robotics training. Also, China's shocking new military drone, AI that was uploaded to ISS supercomputer and more. Let's get it. Elon Musk just sued Sam Altman and OpenAI again. In his lawsuit, the entrepreneur pointed out that Altman once convinced Musk to create a non-profit organization to develop artificial intelligence for the benefit of humanity. Elon invested in the project, letting it develop at his expense for the first five years. However, as soon as gargantuan profits showed their head on the horizon, Altman turned the company into a commercial enterprise. Last year, 2023, OpenAI entered into an exclusive agreement with Microsoft, giving it license to GPT-4 and all their tech that preceded it. At the same time, the company imposed a paid subscription and didn't publicly disclose R&D results, including details of the architecture, hardware, training methods, and computational resources used to create GPT-4 and 4.0. To conceal its actions, Musk claims OpenAI moved most of its researchers to a commercial entity. This move allowed the company to evade public scrutiny and avoid financial disclosure, which is mandatory for nonprofit organizations. Musk now is asking the court to impose maximum damages for breach of contract, false advertising, unfair competition, and other shenanigans. Let's play Nostradamus. Who do you guys think is going to come out on top? Our two cents? This is just PR. Highly likely it's not money that's eaten at Elon, it's the uncertainty. What exactly did OpenAI manage to create? And how about this gem? We all know and love the figure one robot. Guess what? There's two of them now. The demo left a lot of questions unanswered with zero useful info to go by, as it was most likely intended to do. However, IEEE Spectrum journalists managed to get in touch with representatives of Figure AI and learn a little more. So apparently, Figure 2 is the result of, quote, complete redesign of hardware and software, end quote. Just like 01, Figure 2 is already undergoing testing at a BMW factory, where engineers are trying to figure out where and how to use the robot in the first place. Imagine the face of BMW when they heard they gotta put O2 somewhere. The robot's body consists of a couple thousand parts with only 10% of them designed by the company's own engineers. The robot has interchangeable legs, the battery can also be replaced, but it'll take a little bit of tinkering, and it looks like Figure 2 is set to work 5-hour shifts. At the back of the robot's knees and elbows are soft covers that limit the range of motion but prevent pinching. Engineers remove the wires inside the robot's arms and up the number of degrees of freedom to 16. Actually, Tesla's Optimus got its arms updated as well, to 22 degrees of freedom. Check out our video in the description for more. You can talk to Figure 2 like a chatbot. At the same time, developers say that the machine has so-called visual intelligence. That is, the robot understands what it sees and can decide if it needs to do something about it. A bold statement, but for now, the word on the street is that the range of tasks that the robot can perform autonomously is still extremely limited. Moving on, check out this little guy from Berkeley. It's a robust and inexpensive platform for explorers. The robot easily survives falls, moves in human-like manner in all directions, and most importantly, is designed for learning algorithms with low modeling complexity. That means it's fairly easy to train it in a simulation and have it do the same thing in reality. Cute and practical. What would you guys do with it? Let us know in the comments. And NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wan unveiled the biggest breakthrough in Project Groot. Designed to simplify and accelerate the development of humanoid robots, Groot apparently solved one of the biggest problems in robotics, namely data scaling. So if GPT can be trained on billions of pages of text on the internet, how do you train a robot? NVIDIA got an Apple Vision Pro headset and showed a robot how to perform tasks. Then, using RoboCasa, a generative modeling framework, researchers multiplied the demo data by changing the appearance and layout of the environment. 
In the last step, they applied MimicGen to further multiply the data by changing the robot's motion. With GPU accelerated modeling tech, NVIDIA has successfully transformed rare and expensive human demo data into massive training samples. As Juan said, quote, it seems we can finally apply the law of scaling to the field of robotics, end quote. Somebody, pass Jensen a message, please, teach it to do dishes. On top of that, Neuro Robotics comes out and says, thank you NVIDIA Humanoid Robot Developer Program for early access. This video shows the 4NE1 robot performing a variety of tedious household chores from ironing to cooking, as well as cleaning up scattered items on the table and entertaining children. All of this is reportedly made possible by training the robot in a simulated environment. As for the robot itself, it weighs 180 pounds or 80 kilos, stands at 5'11 or 180 centimeters tall, and can walk almost 2 miles or 3 kilometers per hour. The robot is equipped with sensors in its arms that allow it to pick up objects accurately. A display on its head shows status, and the head itself has microphones built into it for voice recognition. The robot can operate autonomously or be controlled remotely and is capable of lifting and carrying objects weighing up to 33 pounds or 15 kilos. Companies like 1X, Boston Dynamics, Figure, Lynx Dynamics, and others also received early access to NVIDIA solutions for humanoid robots. And we are all on the edge of our seats here, waiting for their new videos. Are you? Let us know in the comments. On to China now. Engineers from Shanghai Jiatong University have developed a drone that can not only fly and hover in place, but also dive underwater. The Nisha Sea Dart is an electric, hybrid, flying, vertical takeoff and landing underwater vehicle. It can dive at high speeds nose first into the water, completely submerge, perform tasks underwater before surfacing back up, and take off flying. From what we gather, this is literally the world's first drone, apart from its predecessor, that can dive, complete a mission, and then go about its business in the air. Obviously, this is intended for military purposes, although this is not directly reported. Characteristics of the Nisha Sea Dart are unknown, but the original drone could fly 22 miles or 36 kilometers per hour, reach distances of up to 4 miles or 7 kilometers on a single charge, and dive over 160 feet or 50 meters. For more, check out our previous video about Chinese tech in the description. Do we have any fans of Black Mirror here? Unitree has upgraded its go-to robot so that humans can't run away from it. Advanced motorized wheels and software allow the robot to quickly traverse rough terrain and impressive obstacles. At the same time, the wheels can be locked so that the robot can walk with a simple step at a speed of 8 feet or 2.5 meters per second, walk on stairs or, for example, balance on its front legs. Basically, all the power and dexterity of Go2, but with increased speed and walkability. What do you guys think such a robot could be useful for? At the same time, Unitree's direct competitor, Deep Robotics, has released a video with instructions on how to properly go fishing with the company's X30 robot. It looks pretty good, but it's unclear why the robot has to be dragged on a rope, for visual appeal or because it can't follow a human. It seems that by now, such a simple feature should have been implemented. The manufacturer's website claims that the robot can autonomously perform inspections in factories and heat, cold, rain, etc., but apparently, it can only follow a predetermined route, which is kind of limiting. But as long as the drinks stay cold, what does it matter, right? Back to OpenAI, these folks love a scandal. So about a year ago, they developed technology for labeling texts created by ChatGPT. And that's cool. But turns out OpenAI is deliberately keeping this tech close to their chest because they don't want to alienate users and lose profits. Being able to identify GPT creations would help fight misinformation, check final year works and research papers since many use GPT exactly for those purposes. Obviously, there's the technical aspect to it as well. Labeling technology is easy to bypass, like rewrite the text with another neural network, run it back and forth through a translator, or even pepper them with smileys and then delete them. Either way, OpenAI doesn't want to share. Do you think all AI work should be labeled, or would you prefer to keep it on the down low? 
From down low to up high, the International Space Station got itself an AI. No, not from Altman, but from Booz Allen Hamilton, an electronic intelligence company working for the government. The AI is installed on the HPE Spaceborne supercomputer, which is designed for local data processing and computing, including AI and machine learning tasks. The neural network is capable of efficiently analyzing data, solving complex problems, and providing necessary information through natural language processing. The AI is expected to take over the processing of all the primary information collected by the station. Scientists on Earth will now get ready analytical conclusions instead of the raw data. Let's just hope this AI doesn't hallucinate. In the future, such technologies can be used in long-distance space expeditions and colonies on other planets. It should go through a rigid training process and probably not be given access to opening and closing doors. To learn more, check out our video about AI bias in the description. Folks, if you're afraid of external AI, then you should probably stop watching right now. Meet PillBot, the latest marvel from Indiat X that allows doctors to look inside your stomach without getting all invasive about it. This tiny micro-robot moves around the stomach instead of the usual endoscope. The device streams live video while the doctor controls it remotely using the internet. In just 30 minutes, the PillBot does its job and then is off to, should we say, oblivion. PillBot could save patients from anesthesia and meaningless hospital visits since four out of five endoscopies turn out to be unnecessary. At the same time, this device could help detect stomach cancer and other diseases. Clinical trials for this 35 bucks a piece robot will be completed later this year with approval from the FDA expected in 2025. NDX hopes to start selling PillBot a year after that. And finally, Xpeng, which became famous for its flying car concepts, has unveiled an electric car charger that will cram 180 miles or 300 kilometers in just five minutes. The liquid-cooled S5 charging station is capable of delivering up to 800 kilowatt of power, charging the battery literally half a mile or a kilometer per second. The charging process starts less than 13 seconds after the electric vehicle is connected to the station. Until now, the most powerful charging station in Xpeng's arsenal was the S4, introduced in 2022. It's capable of charging an electric car for 50 miles or 90 kilometers less than the S5 in the same time. Xpeng's network has more than 1,300 S4 stations, but by the end of the year, they plan to deploy 10,000 autonomous charging stations, including 4,500 ultra-fast S5s. What a time we live in, huh? There's more folks, but we're out of time. So subscribe, like our videos, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.